Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the Health Plan Build for Creators. Health Plan is a very useful skill for creators in terms of farming, boss hunts, clearing instances, and setting up the castle defense in WoW. Summoning Health Plans provides a good AoE skill which deals massive neutral damage to enemies within range and has a chance to inflict a bleed and curse effect on the target. It also attacks hidden players and reveals them when the attack connects. Thus, it's very useful against Assassin Cross and Stalkers. In this guide, we'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, enchantments, and pets for the Hell Plan Creator build. I hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a clearer idea on how to use Hell Plans effectively. Take note though that this is more of a mid to late game build, as you need to invest in job level, runes, and equipment for you to be able to maximize the potential of your Hell Plans. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's start with a stat build. The most important stat for the health plant build is strength, since it increases physical attack, thereby increasing the damage dealt by health plants. Just pump all points of strength until you have 99 base strength. As for the other stat points, you can allocate it all on VIT for survivability when doing boss hunts and clearing instances. It also increases your homunculus atmosphere's attack using the Super Life Psychic skill. However, some players prefer allocating points on int instead of it for a higher damage output but at the expense of survivability. This is more of a late game build as you need good defensive gears as well as high stats in the adventure handbook. There's no need to put points on deck since hell plants have high hit and most mobs do not have high flee. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. For the merchant skills, you should allocate points on Level 10 Loud Exclamation which gives higher strength attribute. Level 10 Buying Low to get a 10% discount when buying alchemy materials and other items from NPC shops. Level 10 Fundraising to increase any income when farming. And lastly, get Level 10 Overpriced to get more profit when selling to NPC shops. For the Alchemist skills, you may get Level 2 Homunculus since Amistir is the best homunculus for this build. Level 4 Resurrect Homunculus which is very useful when tanking boss monsters. Level 10 Life Psychic as it increases the attack of Amistir and the damage of Hell Plant, but decreases your physical and magic attack for 300 seconds. Level 5 Homunculus Strength 1 which increases the attack power and attack speed of Amistir. And Level 10 Axe Hammer Mastery for additional 60 points on physical attack. As for the remaining 9 skill points, you may allocate it on any skill of your choice. If going PvP, you should get level 5 Acid Terror and level 4 Acid Demonstration as these skills deal huge damage with a chance of breaking the enemy's armor. These skills are also good against MVPs and minis. Now you may be wondering why I didn't put points on Pharmacy which is used to produce potions and other alchemy materials. This is because I prefer having a separate build for making potions using the Emir's Notebook. In this build, you need to pump Dex and Luck stats and then max out Learning Potion, Gene Modification, and Pharmacy to guarantee 100% success rate when crafting plant bottles and other alchemy materials. For the creator skills, you should prioritize getting Level 10 Hell Plant which will be your primary damaging skill. Summoning a Hell Plant consumes one plant bottle and each plant exists for 30 seconds only. Only two Hell Plants can coexist but with Hell Plant Occult Rune, this can be increased to 3. Next, get Level 10 Homunculus Strength 2 for additional 100% Hell Plant damage as well as to increase Amistir's max HP and attack speed. Then a lot points in level 10 gene research which increases int and thus gives more attack with the int switch runes activated. And level 5 super life psychic to give Amistir higher damage. As for the remaining 5 points, allocation will be up to you. My suggestion will be to max acid demonstration to level 5 and then put points on powerful acid demonstration to get it to level 4. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 20 Life Psychic which further enhances the damage of Hell Plants and Amistir. 
Level 20 Axe Hammer Mastery for additional 10% increase in physical attack. And Level 20 Loud Exclamation which grants more strength not only for you but also for the whole party. Now let's go to runes. Runes are vital for the creator class as these heavily increase the damage output of health plants and your homunculus. The most important rune to get first is the Hell Plant Occult Rune, which increases the number of Hell Plants that can coexist from 2 to 3. The path leading to this rune will also activate Ignore Death, Strength, and Amysterious Blessing runes, which are all useful for the Hell Plant build. After that, proceed to the two Hell Plant Mastery runes, which reduce the cast delay of Hell Plants by 0.25 seconds each and free health plant and power runes, which increases the damage of health plants by 5% each. Next, activate the remaining free strength runes and four ignore death runes. Since Amistir will be your main homunculus for this build, you should go get the 5 Amistir's Blessing Runes which increases attack by 20 points each. Then proceed to the 4 homunculus skill runes to level up Amistir's skills. To increase the range of Amistir's Taunt, which is useful against boss monsters, you need to get the Wild Clamor Group Rune. You may also get the 5 Homunculus Repair Runes for tanking boss monsters. Lastly, if you chose to put points on int, it is a must to get the 5 int switch runes, each of which increases attack by 0.2 for every 1 point of int. That means every 1 point of int you have will give 1 attack. If you have remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby attack and refine attack runes. Take note that this rune map only includes those which can increase the damage of health plants and atmosphere. Feel free to experiment and modify with your runes based on your playstyle and personal preference. Next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, we want to equip items and cards that increase physical attack, strength, and ignore defense in order for the health plants to inflict higher damage output. For the weapon, you need to get an Elder's Hammer. This is the most ideal weapon for creators since it gives high base attack and has synergy with other creator skills like Acid Terror, Acid Demonstration, and Improved Acid Demonstration. A suitable cheaper alternative to the Elder's Hammer is the Slash, as it gives huge physical attack at Tier 5. As for the weapon cards, it will depend on the monsters you're farming. Use an appropriate element, size, or race card to boost damage. As an example, if you are farming Orc Lady which is of Earth Element, Medium Size, and Demi-Human Race, then you can inlay your weapon with two of each or a combination of the following cards. Men Blood Card, Skeleton Worker Card, and Hydra Card. For the offhand, it is a must to equip a Rasa Bracelet which ignores 25% of the defense of your target. This is because most of the monsters you'll be fighting against have huge death stats. As for the offhand cards, you can inlay cards that increase damage to monsters with certain elements. As an example, equipping a Draco card increases damage to Earth monsters by 5%, perfect for farming Orc Lady. Next, for the armor, you may use a slotted tights and upgrade it to tier 3 for additional 8% attack damage. 
This is relatively cheap and gives high attack power. However, perhaps the best armor for creators is the Alloy Armor which is the final tier upgrade of the Alloy Mail. When using Amistir, a clean Alloy Armor gives plus 5 bit and plus 8% attack. If you upgrade it to tier 4 and refine it to plus 10, it will give an additional plus 9% attack for a total of 17% attack power. However, it's quite expensive to upgrade and refine Alloy Armor to plus 10, so you may opt to do this for the later stages of the game. As for armor cards, you may place an Archer Skeleton Star card for plus 2 strength and plus 5% attack, or a Monarch Star card which gives 15% ignore defense. For the garment, get an Ancient Cave for the 15% ignore def stat since most mobs and boss monsters have high def. Then place a Ragic card which reduces neutral damage taken by 10%. As for the foot gear, you may wear staunch shoes for higher HP and faster movement speed, or Rune Boots which gives faster movement speed, additional 30% healing received, and 3% attack power. For the foot gear cards, inlay a Chon Chon card for additional 2 strength, or a Unit 01 card from the Ava event which gives plus 10 attack, plus 2 strength, and plus 2 dex. For the accessories, you should get strength rings. Upgrade them to tier 4 for higher strength and attack stats. Powerful Ring which is the final tier upgrade of the Strength Ring is just optional since it is quite expensive and more difficult to have it slotted. For accessory cards, get a Marine Sphere card which gives you the ability to use level 3 Magnum Break since using this skill increases your attack damage by 20% for 10 seconds. Other cards that you may use are the Mantis card which gives plus 5 strength, Cobalt card which gives plus 4 strength, or a Zipper Bear Star card which grants plus 10 hit and plus 3% attack. There are also accessory cards that increase damage to monsters of certain elements such as the Kaha card which increases damage to earth monsters by 15%. This will be very useful when grinding EXP from Orc Ladies in Clock Tower Basement 1. For the headgears, these are the suggested items. For the head, a cheap but really good starting gear is a Cat Ear Berry as it gives plus 5% attack. You may also use the Rudolph's Horn for a plus 5% melee damage. It also grants plus 5% ignore death provided that your total strength reaches 200. Majestic Goat is also good due to the plus 5 strength and plus 10% ignore death stat it provides. However, the blueprint and crafting materials are quite pricey and it doesn't have a card slot. For the headwear cards, you may put in a Rocker Star card which increases dex by 2 and attack by 20. For the face, get a nut on head as it increases hit by 5 and ignore death by 5%. Or a hockey mask for PvP or when farming orc lady since it increases damage to demi-human race by 10%. For the mouth, you can use a spike scarf for PvP or when farming orc lady as it increases damage to demi-human race by 5%. Or magic firewood which gives plus 10% chance to inflict burning state when using skills or auto attacks. For the back item, craft a Devil Wing for additional plus 1 to all attributes and plus 5% damage. And for the tail, you can get either the Matrosa's Tail for additional refined attack or Beast's Tail which gives plus 1 to all attributes and plus 3% ignore death. I did not include gacha headwear since most of the items are limited edition and requires a lot of luck to get what you need. You can still achieve massive damage without spending real money in this game. As for the enchantment, you should aim to have the 4th enchant morale, which gives 5 to 20% ignore death stat, or sharp blade, which increases melee damage by 2.5 to 10%. As for pets, you may either get a desert wolf baby, which gives plus 5% death penetration at max skill level, or a deverushi, which increases attack by 40 at max skill level. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when using health plants. First, let's discuss how to get plant bottles. Plant bottles which are needed to summon health plants can be bought from the item shop NPC at 1,500 zenny or 1,350 zenny if you have level 10 buying low. You may also craft it using the alchemist skill pharmacy which I've mentioned previously. The crafting materials are hard skin which you can get from monsters or buy from the exchange, bottle and alcohol which you can only buy from the item shop NPC. The most economical way to get plant bottles is to craft your own and farm hard skin from pet adventure using your outs. 
You will need to use free baby desert wolf pets with level 10 hardworking skill to reduce the battle time and adventure to 42 minutes instead of 1 hour. Then target the desert wolf as a monster and you'll gain around 150 to 200 hard skins per cycle. I know it's very costly to farm using hell plants but with this tip, you can definitely lower your expense and increase your profits when farming. Next, here are my grinding tips. For your auto skill slot, you need to put in loud exclamation and live psychic. You can also put in magnum break if your accessory has a marine spirit card. Then manually place your hell plants near the monsters you're farming. Usually two hell plants are enough to farm if you can already one hit them. The most common monster to farm with hell plants is the orc lady in the clock tower basement one. The best location for grinding is at the leftmost part of the map at around the 10 o'clock direction. Hell plant is a force neutral skill so using flame heart won't increase your damage output. However, its damage can be affected by race, element, and size cards, so you can use the Man Blood card, Skeleton Worker card, and Hydra card to boost damage against the Orc Ladies. To boost damage, you may eat 4 to 5 star cooked foods that increase attack and ignore defense, such as the Fantasy Fish Soup, Aldebaran Fish Soup, and Pantera Royal Seafood Soup. You can also use Strength from A from the Food Shop NPC for additional strength and melee damage. The 10% discount provided by the Buying Low skill will be very beneficial when you buy meals from the food shop. For boss hunts, endless tower, and other instances, here are my tips. Summon a hell plant near the mini or MVP as this will trigger your atmosphere to attack the target. Once atmosphere is attacking, place two more hell plants. Then use acid demonstration for more AoE damage. Don't forget to put Resurrect Homunculus in your auto skill slot to revive atmosphere when it gets killed and Homunculus Repair to regenerate Amistir's HP. Also use damage modifying cards like the Minoris card and food buffs like Ice Cream to further increase your damage. And for my last and final tip, you need to invest in Weapon and Accessory Enhancement, Guild Combat Blessings, and Adventure Handbook Deposit Rewards in order to achieve higher base attack. Having a huge physical attack will definitely synergize with your skills, runes, cards, and equipment to further enhance your health plant's damage. Alright, so far we discussed the most recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, pets, and tests for the health plant creator build. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your creator. Feel free to comment down below if you have questions and suggestions. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see our next episode.